Well, 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 here we are. It's just three days until the launch of Guild Wars 2's second expansion, Path of Fire, and they've given us the launch trailer. So if people don't know, usually when these things are announced, you get an announcement trailer that gives you an overview of all big gameplay features and teaches people out of the loop what's going on. And then right around release, they'll do some kind of extra trailer uh, that's the launch one. And the capacity of those usually is more of a flavor hype thing and quite often a CGI-based experience. So back in Prophecies, we had this. For Factions, we have this. For Heart of Thorns, very recently, uh, just two years ago, we had this trailer. Uh, so I was quite looking forward to the Path of Fire one because I do think that the CGI stuff has something to offer. People make the argument, oh, CGI trailers are terrible because they don't give you any real impression of actual gameplay. But I would say for a launch trailer, for a release trailer, uh, that's really not the purpose anyway. It's about that final spike of hype. And the other thing specific to launch trailers is that if you do them in CGI, they're kind of a form of content in and of themselves in that you won't really experience what's going on on that video in the actual game. Uh, if you do a gameplay trailer right on launch, it's kind of weird because the player base is going to experience all that stuff in just a couple of days anyway, so there's not a very long period of time to chew on it. So, yeah, I'm generally speaking in favour of CGI trailers. I think they do a lot for some of those gaming franchises out there. The question is, does ArenaNet have the money to make one, and especially for Path of Fire, an expansion that has been built in tandem with live updates this time? We've only been waiting three months for this thing, and then a couple of months after it comes out, we're straight back into Living World. So did they do it? Well, no. That's a bit of a bummer, a bit of a disappointment, but the upside is we can do a frame by frame and really draw on some cool images and fun stuff and hints at the story that's upcoming. So let's have a watch. This is the Path of Fire launch trailer. What happened to you out in the desert? It's a powder keg over there, and that maniac has already lit the fuse. One person against a god of war. We know there's something in the desert that will help us turn the tide against Balthazar. This be your first god fight? Yeah, you. The elder dragons will die by my hands. And their power will become my power. I fear he may get the weapon. If he does, the consequences will be unpredictable. Kill a god or what? We cannot defeat him on our own. There's no coming back. We must strike now. The gods have abandoned this world. No more running, Balthazar. Face me. <laughs> okay, so as you can see there, there's quite a lot going on. This thing reads to me, more than anything else, like four Living World trailers all stitched together at once. And I think once the game comes out as well, we might find the uh, experience is structured a little bit like that as well. Five maps, it'll be kind of like five Living World updates all at once. We shall see. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's the introduction to the trailer. What we're going to do now is go through piece by piece, pick at the audio and uh, what we can see going on. There are a lot of big reveals. So this is not obviously the first marketing that's occurred for Path of Fire. All the other stuff though has been centered very much around the early initial maps and um, definitely we're seeing some later game stuff here. Uh, some thrilling locations that uh, I've been very curious to get back to for many years now. So let's do it. The first shot of the trailer I guess then after we get the arena logo is going to be the 
This one here of this deserty area, just bones. Uh, the shot with the flag in the front as well is very similar to me to this, this shot here from the very start of the Heart of Thorns trailer where we saw Ritlock walking through a deserty place. There's really not much to pick out. I think they're just sort of setting up the environment we're in. That's a desert, obviously. Uh, we get the, the bones themselves could be Giganticus Lupicus bones, kind of Tyria, Guild Wars equivalent of dinosaurs that we know very little about. But I can't say much more except the fact it looks a bit fish-like. Is that weird for me to say? It does kind of feel like a fish, right? Which is great because the Crystal Desert, at least, was once upon a time an ocean. And this might be a sign that we're seeing some of that old aquatic uh, life that died here once it all dried up. And that would be fun for the uh, sort of subject material for the expansion what to go into. To Maybe I'm digging desert? a bit deep. What happened to you out in the desert? So we hear someone say what happened to you out in the desert on the voiceover. I'm not really sure where that's coming from or who it's directed at. Uh, but the shot itself is the same environment. But this time we've got our primary antagonist for this expansion. Those out of the loop might not know this. This is a god of fire and war who has returned to the planet. And he's our big bad guy. So this is uh, really what the trailer deals with in massive amounts. And there you go. So we hear it's a power powder keg over there and that maniac has already lit the fuse. I think what we're talking about there is Balthazar um, and him coming into a region of the world where there were already other powerful great antagonists. He's our bad guy, but there's also Kraukatorik there, the Elder Dragon, and there is Palawa Joko, master of the undead and ruler of the cultures down in Elona. At the same time on screen, we just have uh, Balthazar himself marching ominously forward. It's really weird. I'm still not quite accustomed, acclimated, uh, feeling normal about having a frigging god just wander around in the game and the engine and that will be potentially interacting with a lot. And I want a lot of interaction. It's just a very bizarre feeling. Uh, so yeah, we get more of him walking like a badass. He's the maniac. Here we get a sign of one of the first big features of Path of Fire. And it's funny because this trailer, um, when I would describe this as a living world trailer, what I really mean is this trailer mostly fixates on narrative and story. This trailer really means so, so, so little to anyone outside of Guild Wars 2. Um, this is only for those of us invested in the story, I think, that can really derive a lot out of it, except for, you know, pretty graphics and things that we've got. Like, there will never be a moment in this trailer where we see a ton of mounts and they say, mounted combat is coming and stuff like that. No, 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 no. It's just... Random shots are mostly to do with the story, and I guess they're relying on that initial announcement trailer to uh, fulfill that role for them, which is fine, of course, but just another reason why I think this one could have been differentiated in some more uh, interesting ways. Anyway, yeah, this is the fourth mount. This is the um, Sand Jackal. Uh, it's brought to life by these the power of these runes. We're supposed to get some cool story about them uh, We saw on the main website that this is actually something to do with the Jin, and uh, that's fairly cool now This character on the back. This is a player character So those who aren't familiar with Guild Wars 2 in their trailers What they do is they go to character creation and they make some kind of player character who will represent the generic MMO player and that's who they are. So this is not a character. This is not, you know, uh, I saw on Reddit someone was saying, this is, could be the son of Koss, a cool character from the first game a decade ago. No, this is a sort of a nameless, faceless entity that just represents you, uh, Mr. Person on Earth, who will be playing Guild Wars 2. And for this trailer, they decided to make him look, uh, you know, of a lone in descent, which is we're using the new character creation stuff they added recently, which is nice. One person against a god of war. And so we move forward, we hear one person against the God of War. Uh, this shot here, um, I don't recognize as a part of the first map, but I have to assume it is a part of the first map. Uh, those that don't know, there was a playable demo for Path of Fire quite recently, and we got a, a large chunk of the first map. Um, but I don't really recall this area, especially not trees that look like this. Um, they've got some nice depth blur going on in the background as well. That will happen quite a lot cinematically for this trailer. So here is the first shot really that struck me. Most of this has been kind of boring par for the course so far. But look at this place. Wow. Now the devs talked on a couple of streams and places about mounted jumping puzzles. And I'm wondering if this is something like that. Or that could just be because I played Uncharted 2 fairly recently. And there's a big, oh was it Uncharted 3? There's a big snowy sequence, a big temple. This reminds me of that very much. Um, but clearly this is probably another player character. And we would expect them to make a big leap on a raptor there. But what about climbing up. What about getting quite high? What about using the springer to get onto this and then jumping over there and, and getting further up? Now the other th striking thing about this is this is a desert expansion 
And yet here we've got this really icy influenced temple. Does that mean that this is going to be on the second map where we know that there is some mountain areas? Um, and if so, that's fascinating to me. I've always loved just as a setting for RPGs and stories and things, areas where deserty regions meet mountains. In fact, that's just interesting on planet Earth too. I love the idea that maybe um, these are people of the crystal desert over the uh, most recent 250 years that built stuff against the mountains and we get to see all of their beautiful like Arabic and uh, heavily Eastern influenced uh, architecture up in the mountains which I hadn't thought of I thought we'd get more dwarven stuff and whatever uh, but yeah or maybe this is somewhere right in the middle of a desert and uh, what we're actually looking at is the influence of some magical activity that's caused this ice to appear here um, because really these look like these should be running water coming from these pots like it's some kind of water feature like water Water comes up through and then it comes down and then up through, you know, their fountains. And now it's all frozen. So the suggestion there would be why is there ice, especially considering, you know, we're not dealing with an ice god in Path of Fire. Um, and maybe there's just to do with the magical instability of the world at the moment in current storylines. Maybe it's got something to do with gin, some great power, elemental power. I don't know. Uh, but that's why this is so striking to me. I think it's such a beautiful looking temple and something I really wouldn't have expected. And they hammer it with us straight away. There's something in the desert that will help us turn the tide against Balthazar. So here the trailer starts teaching us something about the story that is thrilling for me as a lore enthusiast and particularly someone who has read the second novel many years ago. Uh, so we hear in the voiceover there's something in the desert that could help us turn the tide against Balthazar. What is that? So currently in the story, all the only reason we've gone to the desert is not because there's supposed to be some great weapon here or that we know of some great weapon here. We're in the desert because Balthazar in the desert and we've kind of been forced to it and we have to go meet him head on. Um, and and so what could that weapon be? Well, I think that's what the trailer is going to explore. And I'll give you my answer to that in just a second. Um, but uh, in terms of the uh, the shot here, we get a Silvari. I don't know. Maybe they're doing a thing actually where we've got a human player character and then a Sura player character. Here's a Silvari. And uh, we get this very cool outfit on them as well. Uh, standing in sort of some verdant, nice, lush, tree, bushy area out in the desert. Uh, here we get a shot that reminds me very much of the most recent map that got it added to the game. So for the people that don't know, Guild Wars 2 doesn't just expand when expansions come out. There are constantly new maps. Like every two to three months, they'll put a new map in. And big, awesome new maps. This reminds me a lot of the most recent of those before the expansion dropped, when we returned to Ore for the first time since uh, 2012. And you get these excellent looking pipe things. Again, I just think jumping puzzle. I probably shouldn't think jumping puzzle. The entire game is going to use a lot of platforming as a part of the mountain mastery system. Uh, but we get these nice pipes. Pipes. I don't know whether we'll get any explicit information about who constructed them. More interesting than the pipes themselves, though, is where they are set. And where they are set seems to be an unseen, as until now, a completely unseen location for Guild Wars 2. And that's the Desolation. So, the Desolation was an excellent area from Guild Wars Nightfall. As I said, 10 years ago in 2007, we last got to experience this place. A sulfurous, disgusting, tormented, twisted landscape that mortals could not survive in and without the assistance of great beasts of the deserts. Um, and so I think what we see is like this big sulfurous plume. You can see this sickly, horrible yellow everywhere. There's miasma around. This is totally the desolation. Uh, knowing then that this is the desolation, this pipe, I wonder if this has something to do with the great dam that had been constructed by the people of the world there. And, you know, it's shattered because Joko destroyed it as it once upon a time may have carried water to uh, population further south or further north and uh, and maybe jo this Joko destroyed this a long time ago and now it doesn't work C that could perhaps be what's going on uh, I think also this might be unbound magic in the background here as a part of one of the map mechanics which I'd like very much but yeah the desolation and we get to see it for the first time here in this trailer I don't recall any other path of fire media showing content from such late game in the expansion it's all been early game stuff so I love this the camera swings quite a lot at the end of the shot here as well. I'll just show you uh, to look right down in this big basin over here. Uh, not too much to draw at, but there you go. Only exists for a couple of frames. So this is a pretty boring shot. This is um, a uh, an enemy we'll be fighting in the expansion. These are the Forged. They're kind of the minions and associates of uh, Balthazar. We'll be getting plenty of information on them. But we've already seen a lot of Forged in the uh, demos and in a lot of the media stuff. Also, even less interestingly, the background here is uh, a burning village, a burning town. And I think that this is just uh, what we've already played if you experience the demos. So first map, early stuff. 
and we see them charging along. Uh, similar thing again, it's just a nice cinematic shot of us riding in on this wolf. We know that the wolf can teleport. I don't think they opt to do that on the trailer. We could teleport forward and maul that guy, but we don't, we don't get to see that. Um, oh, we do from a different angle, maybe. So here they are head on, about to clash. Oh, no, they cut right before. So we don't get to see the uh, intro ability there. As you guys know, every mount that's in the game will have some kind of engage attack, and we don't quite get to see that there. So now we cut to uh, another sort of iffy part of the trailer, honestly. Um, for those of you who have been ravenously following everything, that is, uh, they start reusing a lot of footage from the Elite Spec trailers or re-going over that material at the, very, uh, at the very best. So what we're looking at here is one of the new Elite Specializations, the Deadeye. Just like mounts in this trailer exist, but aren't directly called to. Same here. So this is the new Thief Elite Specialization. You get to be a sniper in the game now. It's the craziest, ma ha at highest range damage that will ever exist in Guild Wars 2, I think, probably. Um, and we get to see them sort of stalking their prey a little bit. Where that was set with all the rain and stuff, I'm not entirely sure. Let's go back a bit. It is raining here. It looks a bit like ore, honestly, to me. I don't know where this could be set. Maybe even later in the expansion. It's just that it's so blurred, we don't get a very good picture. Um, I like that there'll be raining stuff going on in the desert, for sure. If you remember one of the other desert maps that already exists in Guild Wars 2, there's an oasis there, and there's this event where a centaur shaman summons a rainstorm that uh, waters all the crops and things there. Maybe we'll get something similar. Who knows? But anyway, so there's the Deadeye. Here we get a, a gorgeous shot. Again, I'm guessing second map, just because you've got all this crazy mountain stuff going on. And we know that there will be arid, there will be dry, there will be hot areas of the second map. It's only a portion of it that is snowy. Uh, but this is another one of the mounts. So this is the third mount. This is the skimmer. This is the mount that is like a ghost from Halo. And uh, you can hover over various aspects of terrain without having to jump. You can hover over water. You can hover over quicksand. And you can do all kinds of fun things with that. This is the mount I am most excited about by a long way. And it rockets past the screen. Uh, finally, now we're looking at some of the branded. So remember, Guild Wars is about Elder Dragons. Each big product is going to center around an Elder Dragon in some way. So our main enemy here is, the, is a god. But uh, an Elder Dragon is the very centerpiece of this conflict. The god is trying to kill that dragon. And instead of us trying to kill a dragon now, we're trying to defend it. Uh, but the brand is there. There's a huge amount of brand. There's going to be a lot of that content in the game. And here we see some branded stuff. Uh, the enemy, though, I, I, I feel like I recognize or isn't particularly new or anything. I want to see lots of new varieties of branded. And I'm not sure this has quite satisfied that for me. Maybe he is new. And I've just got ridiculously high standards. And I don't realize... But uh, he just feels like a... Have we seen a branded like this? You guys can leave uh, in the comments whether that's true or not. But we're well in branded territory, at least. Um, it looks very much like earlier branded places we've been to before. But what's exciting about this, obviously, is that this is level 80 content. And this is, uh, you know, 2017 content where they know the combat system so much better. And they've really refined things and know what they're doing. As opposed to sort of face roll stuff in 2012. So it, it's looking pretty good. Another shot of the brand. Uh, we're also, of course, getting a demonstration of one of the elite specializations here. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the Scourge. We can see that they're actually wearing the Scourge shoulders. Look at this, guys. I, I'm actually good at Fashion Wars 2 right now. I'm pretty sure those are the Scourge soldiers, uh, shoulders, their fingers coming out of almost like the sand. Um, and we, I think we can see a bit of the sand magic and a shade being cast here uh, by a necromancer. Um, here we've got a spell breaker, I believe this probably is. Uh, not dual wielding daggers, though, I don't think. Is that a one? Maybe that's not. Maybe that's just the angle. But this is about breaker location unknown. A bit of fire on the screen over here on the right, suggesting something to do with Balthazar. I couldn't tell you much more. Um, uh, this is still the spellbreaker, I think, uh, using some kind of big ability. Now the spell. Oh, the yeah, this is the spellbreaker using the elite winds of disenchantment. So what we're looking here. Uh, is the third faction. So we've quickly got Balthazar, Krakatoric, third faction here. These are the Undead, uh, also known as the Awakened. These guys are, are, I wouldn't actually describe, are they thralls technically? They are al allied with Palawa Joko, who potentially will have a big part in the story or may just be introduced to us in the story and then have a bigger role to play later as Living World Season 4 begins. Which remember, is going to be very quickly after this comes out, so we'll see. So, and uh, so we get a bit more voiceover, let's listen. This be your first god fight? Yeah, you. Okay, so will this be your first god fight? We hear two characters speaking to one another, and he says, "Yes." What about you? Uh, so that's sarcastic. So let's let's go back visually here. All right. Um, 
We got a shot again of this is just the first instance uh, as far as I can see sieging and fire and explosions because that's cool for trailers But nothing really for us to pick out next shot though uh, We get to see who was talking in the voiceover this guy says will this be your first god fight this guy Sarcastically quips and responds no you and uh, we kind of get a look at him. So this is Kanak and Ritlock. Uh, Ritlock, we have a ton of stories we're looking forward to in the expansion. The first trailer opens with some like concept art -y good stuff about this char and some adventures we're going to learn from him. His sword is very prominently on screen. Uh, the Heart of Thorns stuff featured a lot of Ritlock. I like the idea that Ritlock's a big player in all the trailers for all the expansions of Guild Wars 2. Um, and yeah, so we get Kanak. We know that in this expansion there aren't going to be too many characters hanging around with us. So if you guys do feel super out of loop, you don't know who this is. You don't know who this is, and yeah, I'm not sure whether you're t super into them. You're not going to feel that too much because they really have fixated on a much smaller selection than Heart of Thorns did, and hopefully that will let everyone, new and old alike, get to know these guys and appreciate them, and we'll have a cool story. Um, as for the lines themselves, I think it is just a joke. I don't think there's a real suggestion that Kanak has somehow fought a god before. Uh, we of course know that in terms of deeds accomplished, Ritlock is probably the greater of the two, having two Elder Dragons under his belt, and Kanak only potentially having one. But two years ago in Heart of Thorns, the player character could actually choose to not have Kanak participate in an Elder Dragon fight at all. Uh, but yeah, and uh, we get to see his shield again. I always like Kanak's shield. And uh, there you go. Uh, you. There on the edge of the brand as well, it might be fun to notice. And he smirks. Uh, some people were saying online that they think the animations look better uh, for the game according to this trailer. I'm not sure whether I've noticed that or agree with that particularly. It seems sort of more of the same to me, uh, but that doesn't mean it's bad. So we get another shot. Now this place looks particularly barren and open and empty. It almost feels like a dev map to me, seriously. Like look at how sheer these cliffs are all the way back here. Um, why would they have a location like this to uh, have a vast play space made for some kind of big boss, hmm? And, well, check it out. Balthazar explodes in on the scene. The music changes at this point. You guys heard at the start of this video, the music gets incredible in the trailer from now on. This is the player character versus Balthazar. And I think we, we genuinely will have a big conflict. Because think about what they just in the trailer. Have you ever fought a god? Uh, so, Balthazar now in the voiceover says, The Elder Dragons are going to have to die, blah, blah, blah. And we sort of stand against him. So, this is the player character reverse shot of what we just had. Yeah, the camera pans out to reveal, and oh my god, we, we, we genuinely only get a single frame here. But what we're looking at here is Ritlock down there, Kazmir here, and Kanak. These guys are like th th some of the only really major characters in this entire expansion. So we're going to get like potentially four or five acts of story that really focus on us, dig into them and give them a lot of breathing room and allow us to love them. And I think that's very cool. Uh, people were mentioning online that maybe the outfit she, uh, Kazmir is wearing here is accidentally somehow an old outfit she used to wear. And obviously all of them changed clothes in the most recent patches. So then for her to go back is odd. Is it intentional or is it inconsistency? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so this is, it's, it's us versus the god, as you can see, and that's what they're setting up. Here's Balthazar himself. So here they have a really interesting shot where um, what we see is Balthazar swings at us. Uh, this is the player character here with the scimitar. I just flipped what we saw a second ago. Uh, he's he's going to swing at us, and then they're going to cut to to Kazmir as though this has been a really dangerous attack, right? Watch this. Here, look at this. She's on the ground all of a sudden. She's 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 not looking happy. It's like there's been some big miserable failure, some cataclysmic mistake that we've made. And uh, what's she in reaction to? So the trailer has uh, quite trickily done something. Here. It's set up the idea that it's well that strike coming on on the player character. But in truth, it's not going to be that, is it? It's not going to be our player character dies or something. It's going to be something else devastating happens in the story. They won't have built this animation and this moment where Kazmir is laying on the floor like this purely for the fun of it and purely for the trailer. They, this is borrowed. This is inherited from some kind of big story beat. And I wonder what that's going to be, if it's going to be a big moment. Is it going to be the death of someone we know? Something even more uh, terrifying and unexpected? We'll have to see, won't we? Okay, now, the next shot is a huge one. Probably the best shot of the trailer. I always like to do this when we talk about trailers online. Which one's the best one? The next shot is definitely the best one for me. Uh, so, first of all, the voiceover. We're going to hear Balthazar say, When the Elder Dragons grow up, their power will become mine. I think something like that. Not too interesting. We don't care too much about that. But... Uh, we see something swoops into this conflict. Maybe this is what Kazmi is in reaction to. I don't know why she'd look so terrified, though. So remember, this whole expansion is about Balthazar versus an Elder Dragon, the Crystal Elder Dragon, Kraukatorik. Ready? So look what they do in this next shot. 
Right as we cut, we see or over the shoulder of Balthazar, we see a beast in the air. This is a wing. This is the wing of a dragon. And as the camera pans now, I'll move it forward. We'll see it pops out on the right. There we go. And we get this beautiful, and I really like the way this dragon looks. We get this excellent looking dragon here um, that is charging at Balthazar and clearly wants to kill Balthazar. So I wonder whether what they're doing is this thing's going to attack Balthazar and he's standing here ready for it and he kills it. And then, uh, and then Kazmi is sad because this was supposed to be our hope and our defense or whatever. What is this, you are wondering? Is this Krauk I guess it's going to be the first question on your mind. Is this one of the Elder Dragons? Are we seeing the Elder Dragon in the trailer? Now, if you remember, the launch trailer in 2012 was, uh, it was actually kind of terrible in a lot of ways, but it showed us Zaitan. It, it spoiled the way that the Elder Dragon of that campaign looked, and it spoiled him. With Heart of Thorns, they didn't necessarily spoil the way Morgimoth looks because Morgimoth was more, his physical body was more of a metaphorical thing and a very large scale thing um, but they did show us an interpretation of the way Morgimoth looked that was very similar to a uh, big boss encounter in the game in the end it was this so now we're at the path of fire launch trailer are we going to see Krauk in the in the launch trailer and well then is this it I don't think you'd be a, a fool a complete fool for believing that this is Krauk based on those lines however what I would say is Elder Dragons are really big and in recent story, they showed us one of the Elder Dragons, the Fire Elder Dragon Prime Order, and it was huge. And I really think the devs have always wanted to give us truly incredible scale Elder Dragons. So if this is Krakatoric, I, I saw a description for this online, which I very much agree. If this is Krakatoric, Krakatoric's lost a lot of weight, let me tell you. So I don't think it is him. I actually think instead of this being Krakatoric, we're looking instead at a minion of Krakatorics or one apartheid to Krakatoric and the brand and so forth. And specifically, I'm wondering if we're looking at, and this was so thrilling to me, Glint's first scion. So uh, for people that don't know, the story here is the Elder Dragon we're about to fight in this expansion. Uh, once upon a time, many hundreds of years ago, had a champion. It was this big badass crystal dragon called Glint. That crystal dragon called Glint uh, was in the first game a decade ago. We got to interact with her a lot in that game. Now Glint had two surviving offspring, uh, that we know, two surviving offspring. Glint had two kids, basically. One of them became Aurene, an egg that we hatched in all the recent story in Guild Wars 2, very recently. It's all been about Aurene. The other one, Gleam, we haven't seen, has been hinted at in the story, but we haven't seen. That Gleam is known as the first scion. So are, are we looking at this character finally? Are we looking at Gleam in this trailer and I believe I'll go one even further I believe we even hear Gleam's voice in this trailer in just a moment uh, so it could be Gleam the other opportunity is it could be Aurene um, Aureen could have feasted on a lot of magic, got a lot bigger during the expansion at some point, and they could have accelerated her growth. I think in terms of the writer's room, they're going to have to accelerate her growth, her growth in some way for her to become badass and interesting. So this might be a conflict with Aureen. Um, and either the first Scion dying, coming in and dying, or Aureen dying. I mean, Christ, all of that's very sad and scary, and maybe that's what we're looking at. Maybe that's what uh, Kazmir is so terrified about. Or they, they truly mess Balthazar up here, we'll see. But he seems so ready for them, right? And he's got the, the great sword, and he's looking... So, uh, so yeah, that's what I believe is going on. I don't think this is Krakatoric. And what that means then, I think, actually, is for the first time, they have not spoiled the appearance of an Elder Dragon in an expansion trailer. They've not done it. Uh, they've done it in the past. This time, And I, I've never particularly liked them doing that because it takes away the mystery of why I'm playing this this franchise. I like to wonder at what the new ex the uh, Elder Dragons will be. And, uh, and for this one, I don't think that the Elder Dragon actually appears. It's much more about, of course, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the god. So, yeah, uh, we get this cool dragon flying in. I'll let you rewatch that shot again because the animation's really beautiful. Let's watch. And you see it just starting to flap its wings. Uh, Balthazar charging his power. Here we get a cut to something completely different. We don't get to see the conclusion of that little moment. Um, we get kind of this golden looking room. We get sort of a vision-y style thing. Uh, we get this energy. Uh, what I think we're looking at here is something to do with the uh, Hall of Ascension in uh, the Crystal Desert. So uh, in the first game when we got to go to this region, we saw there was this place that seemed very much connected with the gods, but we never got any great lore about why it was there or what was going on with it. Uh, or we could have got more. Uh, it was this big, golden, beautiful chamber. Uh, and particularly to enter there, 
we had time to go these rituals, right? We had to get these crystals and we would gather them and we would place them uh, on this pedestal and it would slowly update and stuff. One of the really interesting little details that they had in Prophecies way back in 2005 or whatever. Uh, and I think maybe what we're looking at is some kind of Guild Wars 2 equivalent of that. Maybe. Uh, it also looks a bit crystalline though, so could be something completely different. Now, the shot after this goes very quickly, so I'll try and catch it. Here we go. This is only on screen for the briefest of moments. Uh, but what I actually think we're looking at here is the tail of that dragon we were looking at a second ago. There's this kind of crystalline stuff going on here as well. I'm not sure what that is. Is that just another part of its body? Maybe that's the tail of the dragon and this is the wing. Yeah, that's probably what's going on. And we see Balthazar swinging at it. And big flash of light. The, uh, the, the wing actually lifts up there in the background as though it has actually been struck. Sort of confirming what I talked about earlier that they set up and it even looks like it's tumbling off to the side over like so and uh and yeah so then we take uh, a black screen and we sort of reset i fear he may get the weapon if he does the consequences will be unpredictable okay so i fear he may get the weapon i mentioned just a second ago that i think we we don't just see the first scion in this trailer maybe we actually hear it too uh i think that voice there I believe that that is Gleam. I think that that could... Oh, that's, that's what I'm putting my money on right now. And I think what they're talking about is something that happened in the second novel. So those who have read that will know that Destiny's Edge, who Ritlock, we can see on screen, is a member of Destiny's Edge, was a part of this. Destiny's Edge went to the desert. And they tried to kill this Elder Dragon long ago, failed. But their plan to kill the dragon centered around this spear, this special spear that was said to be able to destroy Krakatoric. That existed in the novel and ever since has just not been touched by the game. And that maybe that makes sense because the game has never dealt with Krakatoric. Now we are dealing with Krakatoric though. Now that is the Elder Dragon that's on the table. So it would make sense for the devs to look back at their lore, look back at that book and look back at that weapon. And so now what do we hear on this trailer? Some reference to a weapon. Uh, I think what we're hearing is Gleam or uh, yeah, probably Gleam. It's gotta be Gleam, right? And I think that this is the same character we saw in Living World Season 2. I think what we're hearing here is them saying to us, listen, there's this crystal spear. Do not let Balthazar get that crystal spear. Your job is to defend this Elder Dragon. And if that's true, you cannot let this crystal spear fall into Balthazar's hands because Balthazar will kill the Elder Dragon with it. You have to keep keep that away from him. And I think that's what a lot of this story and this expansion is actually going to be around. It's going to be around getting to that weapon first. Um, and uh, we see Ritlock on screen quite fittingly then at that time because he's remembering, you know, the events of his life which revolved around that spear once long ago. Fear he may get the weapon. The uh, background as well, I think, sort of supports this argument because it looks very crystalline and stuff. And uh, I wonder, but also golden, so not not menacing and scary and purpley like we see the brand. We're in some kind of crystalline environment, but I think we're safe here. And therefore, I think that what this is, is this is some kind of like lair of gleams. And uh, this is when we're first communicating with them. Like, look at, the, look at the way Ritlock is bowing down in reverence. Who does Ritlock bow down in reverence to? You know? If he does... And so we hear, if he does, we see Balthazar. He is Balthazar. And then the consequences will be terrible. And then we get this shot of these volca uh, the volcanoes, these pyramids being utterly blasted and destroyed. Uh, which is reused footage, actually, from uh, quite a while ago now. But it's fun, I suppose. In fact, is this a new shot, this last shot we get here with these people out in the foreground watching? Now, of course, we know that this isn't actually something that happens in the expansion because this is something we already saw in a cutscene in Guild Wars 2. Uh, it, this was a vision. This was a potential opportunity for something to happen. Uh, and I don't think that Balthazar will be able to do this. I think we'll be the heroes and save the day. So now we have our plan. The music starts to build. Uh, we get our player characters standing in the grass. A lot of people have talked about this grass looking too pixelated, suggesting that maybe they shot the trailer on less than ultra settings. I don't think they would have done that, guys. It probably just means that the, the grass looks a bit poo. We're gonna ki kill a god or what? And so we get in the voiceover, we're gonna kill a god or what? We get the swooping shot. These are our heroes for this expansion, so let's watch it. Uh, the, the pack commander here. And then we've got Kazmir, Ritlock, and Kanak. Uh, we've got the brand. We've got fire. This sort of encapsulates everything about the expansion, right? 
Um, and here's a really cool shot. Uh, I've already declared my favorite for the trailer, but this one's pretty fantastic too. Um, so what we've got here is mounts. Obviously, everybody loves mounts. Mounts are cool. Um, and here's our player on a mount. But really wildly, all the other characters in the story also will be mounted. Look at this. So Kazmir is flying on a skimmer here. Kanak is on a raptor, and so is Ritlock. But I love this. Is this actually gonna? Is this just been built for the trailer, or are we genuinely gonna find that in the story, Kazmir tames a skimmer? Right? I mean, we never saw either of these guys tame a creature because they're not there at the start. But that's going to be really fun to see these guys interacting with, like, these beasts that uh, they start working alongside. What if, as well, think about this. Once the expansion's over and we go into the regular updates coming out and the new maps and the story pushes there, isn't it going to be fun to see Kazmir like, fly in on a skimmer and say hi to Marjorie again or, to, or go meet um, Bram or something and everybody's got these pets but Bram doesn't have one because he never came to the desert? I think that'd be so cool. So, uh, so yeah, also also, uh, Ritlock's Raptor looks very titchy there, and it's quite amusing, but that's just the way that the child look on their mounts. So, great shot, and it's a nice way of uh, seeing how the new expansion features and mechanics blend with the story here. I had not thought about that as being a possibility, but there you go. Uh, so, a, a large set piece here. Uh, this is some wild stuff we're about to see in terms of new enemies, let's just be clear. Uh, I think in the foreground, what we're looking at are members of the Awakened forces. Uh, and in the background, we can see the Forged charging in. So Balthazar v. Joko right now. Uh, these dudes look really exotic. We cannot but they look kind of mummy-like. Uh, in the voiceover we hear, we cannot defeat him on our own. Uh, more Awakened here. Uh, is this, this isn't Joko himself, is it? I don't think Joko appears in the trailer. And sort of slashing at our heroes here. This is the uh, pack commander again, that same cutlass we saw many times before. Back in the desolation on this one. Uh, here we get a broader shot, probably desolation again. Uh, nothing in this trailer you'll notice has been of Vabby. Which, unless, unless maybe that icy temple is Vabby or something, which is, uh, you know, even further south. I, th I think the furthest that they're showing us really is desolation-based stuff. So here we've got uh, Awakened, uh, Forged, fighting it out. You know, they're sieging one another. And um, there's these rings here. I wonder if this is some kind of reference to a GW1 location. I doubt it, though. Uh, and these very obsidian black um, rocks and things. Uh, we get another shot. Big engines of war coming from the Awakened here, I think this is. These are like bone constructs. We saw some of these in the first trailer a couple of months back. Uh, the pack commander looking out over them. No uh, another elite specialization. This one's the Renegade. Uh, we get in the voiceover, there's no going back. Here we see that this shot looks terrible right now, but that was the desolation with the, the water pipes. We must uh, next, they're saying we must strike now. Not too much to dig at there. Uh, even more general uh, moshing and uh, melee and fights between Forge down here and uh, Awakened as well. Looks like there'll be a lot of conflict between the two, a lot. One of the things you guys will remember Heart of Thorns was purported to do, and didn't too much in story, it did in events and stuff, but was have like tons of enemies because they overhauled all of the AI, if you remember, and they were like, yeah, we can have so many more characters on screen. I wonder if they'll really uh, flex their muscles in, the in that department for this expansion. Strike now. And have these armies duking it out. Uh, back to a dead eye shooting forward from earlier. Once again, we've got this uh, conflict we were looking at a second ago, and this character has absolutely been owned, has been uh, flipped up on their back. Also, fire in the background, bones in the background. The bones remind me a bit of Zaitan, actually. Um, okay, all right. And now here, when I, when I mentioned crazy machines of war, so we're seeing Awakened v Forged, right? Right now, we've got an Awakened character running, and there's something above him. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a building? No, it's some kind of giant forged robot that is, Christ knows how many foot tall, squashing Awakened. Are you ready? Boom! What is this? Let's rewatch that. I cannot believe that. What kind of character is this? Is this going to be a world boss? That's always my go-to whenever I see something like this, but this is insane. Uh, and it's just charging around, crushing people. The kind of things that Balthazar seems capable of building is uh, quite terrifying. Here's another shot of it now, as it walks forwards. Um, so yeah, I I'm looking forward to this. Uh, what can I say? We don't get to see the top of it, sadly. So I wonder why they're hiding that in the trailer. Surely in the trailer, you'd want to show it in its full size, but they don't. And I'm, I'm curious if that's because there's something spoilery on top or something. I don't know. So, uh, this shot here, we see Balthazar in the background, he's saying the gods have abandoned this world, which we're all more than familiar with at this point, except him, obviously. He's lifting his sword out of the fire here, 
We don't quite see his head. We saw a headless character like this a while ago um, in the other trailer. But he's lifting his sword out of the fires here. I don't know why. I don't know what this is all in reference to. There's a lot going on with his greatsword. I'm pretty confident that when Living World Season 4 begins, the legendary greatsword we're likely to get is going to be his. Uh, since we got the shiny blade this most recent patch, but there. Uh, here we get some kind of beam attack from another member of the Forged. Here we see our Spellbreaker attacking. They're surrounded by Tar. A big attack going in on Balthazar. Was that Balthazar's feet or was that just a member of the Forge? I can't quite tell. Uh, another player spinning around doing some flashy animations. Not much to pick up. And, uh, and the trailer ends, this is the very last shot now, uh, with us saying, uh, you know, face me, stop running, Balthazar. And he looks towards the camera, he opens his eyes. Now, in the background, we're actually seeing, like, some undead statues. I think these are going to be statues of, Pal I think that's a statue of Palawa Joko, right? I think that's his shoulder. I think that's it here. I think we see another one here. Uh, but Balthazar looks directly at us with his big yellow eyes, his big cat eyes. And, uh, and that is... The expansion. I think also the purple sort of color is sort of suggestive of Krakatoric influence and stuff. So here they, they've managed to encapsulate in uh, one shot kind of um, everything we'll be fighting against and all the major parts of the x pack So there you go. That is their launch trailer. I think you can see now um, that it does very much feel like uh, just a bunch of Living Worlds trailers that have been stuck together. Uh, let me know. Did you guys like this? Did, do you enjoy being able to pick at this? A matter of days, basically, even hours, if you really want, before we can go and play it. Um, how, how worthwhile do you think this was for the devs to do? What were you hoping to see? Uh, and if I missed anything, please do type in the comments because there's going to be lots of people who will be reading down there and uh, you can fill them in on anything that I might have been naff about. Fashion Wars 2 based stuff uh, or any questions that maybe I'll ask. So there you go guys. Path of Fire. Just a couple of days away. I will be there to uh, go through it all with us. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you're as hyped as I am about the expansion and I'll see you very, very shortly.